Good morning, explorers. Good morning. We're in Derry, or London Derry, depending on your persuasion, in Northern Ireland today. We'll be calling the town Derry as most of the locals do. The reason why we're here is because this town is the last remaining Irish town that has a complete wall around it. It was built in the 1600s and it still stands. Right. It's massive as you can see. It was for protection during the time. This town has experienced some trouble throughout history. Yes, so when you hear about the Irish trouble, a lot of it happened here and a lot of it happened in Belfast. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look around and see what we can do in this town. Yep, and we're going to probably explore some of the history, good and bad. Yes. All right. All right, let's go. Our first stop here is the Dairy Girl mural. We have been watching this show since we've entered Ireland. It is hilarious. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on Netflix. It takes place in the 1990s. It follows the, the life of these kids behind us. Their names are Aaron, Claire, Michelle, Orla, and James. And just growing up as, as a teen in the 90s, but also dealing with the troubles that were going on in their city. So, but you can come down here, you know, five minutes worth and get your picture taken with them. It's pretty fun. Our next stop is the Free Dairy Corner. When you look up pictures or information on dairy, this is usually the first thing that comes up. The artist, Liam Hillen, actually painted this as a way to protest. Now this used to be a building and it extended out that way, but they've kept this wall as a shrine. Yeah, it was, it was done in 1969. Yes. And this monument is dedicated to the people of Derry City. These are the hunger strike movements. And more people here. We're learning a little bit more about reading these plaques. In 1969, after a sustained uh, night of protesting and police attacks, that's when the artist Liam had painted on the gable the You Are Now Entering Free Dairy. But they have lots of free dairy tours that you can take. You can learn a little bit about the area. Our next stop is called Bloody Sunday Monument. This took place January 30th, 1972. There was a demonstration going on in this area at the time and 13 people lost their lives due to the British military. Now the plaque over there says that they were armed, but it also on the plaque it says that they were unarmed civilians. So 15 more people were injured during that attack and uh, one more person lost their life. They did erect this memorial to remember those people who lost their lives on that sad day. The next place that we found was the Museum of Free Dairy. We don't know much about this area or the conflict that occurred here, so we thought we'd go inside and take a look. We think it's eight pounds to get in. We'll confirm and we'll put it on the screen, but let's go take a look. When Ireland split from England, six counties remained loyal to the British. That is what became Northern Ireland. During that time, a lot of Catholics that lived here in this area, they were not allowed to have a job, they were not allowed to vote, they were not allowed to rent places or own homes. Uh, they had a hard time going about it. And that's what brought on this conflict. In 1995, though, luckily, there was a peace talk and there was a treaty signed. And now the museum here is not just a tourist attraction takes you through all the events that happened during that time and it also school kids come here from both sides and they learn to kind of coexist with each other so that maybe one day dairy will not be um, Catholics and Protestants maybe it'll just be people
So interestingly enough, the civil rights movement in the United States had a major impact on uh, rights around the world. As information was shared between countries, they started getting reports of our civil rights, and so uh, Ireland realized that they had rights too and decided to start their own protests. What we have learned since we've come to Ireland is that unionists are normally the British side, whereas the Republicans are the Irish side. They are a different type of Republican here than we have in the States. Wow, so that was powerful and emotional. Uh, the curator that was there, he was even telling us that, you know, it, it's, it was such a different time now than it was then. When he was 19, he went to Germany and he saw the locals talking with police officers. There weren't helicopters in the sky. He just said it was just such an incredible feeling to know that, you know, this that was the norm. Yeah. What he had lived it through was not, where it, there was constantly soldiers and uh, military influence. Very it's, cool. It was very interesting. Yes, I would definitely recommend going in and checking it yeah. out and learning a bit of that history. He also said about the town today is friendly and peaceful, whereas 30 years ago it was like a, a military area. Yeah. If you're looking for things to do here, check out the Visit Dairy. This is their tourist office and they'll give you a lot of good things to do. We decided to take a break from our wandering and we stopped at a place called the Tap House Kitchen. It looks like they have a couple of different varieties of food. More importantly, they have Guinness on tap, so we thought we'd do that. One thing we noticed while we were walking around here, because it is Sunday and Father's Day, um, they don't really open a lot of their restaurants up until like early to mid, late afternoon. So it's been pretty interesting um, trying to find things. <laughs> yeah, because we were just gonna go have some pizza and go yeah. Look at this, got a little smorgasbord of uh, different foods here. Mom's garlic fries, got a salad, my chicken wings, chili fries. Gage has fed a salad, Gage's chili fries, and Nikolai's chili beef nachos, and his garlic fries. All right, we're gonna dig in. These garlic fries are delicious. 20 minutes later. The damage was done. <laughs> Alright, so our next stop is the Tower Museum. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the history of Derry, not just the troubles that happen here, but why there's a giant wall around it. Um, it costs $6 to get in and the last tickets are sold at 4 p.m. Let's go. We have Claire's uniform from the show. This is all loaned to them right now from Channel 4, he said. You can sit on the couch and get your pictures taken. You can sit at the table, all that. All of this is actually unloaned from the set. Happened, but the alarm came off, so we we're just gonna head out now. They told us to make our way out the front door. What's going on? We have to do a fire test every six months. Two minutes, we'll be back in. Okay. Apparently, that was a fire drill. 
and they only do that every six months. So we were lucky enough to we be We were here. lucky enough to be here on that day. We weren't sure what we were going to be walking out to, the building on fire or Yeah, considering else. all the ambiance and everything you pick up in the city. Right. So the one thing we were learning when we were doing all our research about Ireland is you will notice that there are kind of two names, one in English, one in Gaelic. The Gaelic name is normally the original name. Um, those names actually have meanings. So Derry would actually have been Dory, and that means oak grove where when the English came in, they kind of just was listening to what they were saying and kind of gave it its own spin on it. Mm -hmm. So dairy really doesn't mean anything, whereas Dory had a meaning. The burning of dairy in 1608. Since Derry was completely destroying all that was left was the stone chimneys and some walls. It was there a favorable report which led to the plantation of the city and county of London Derry and the building of Derry's walls. Calls for volunteering in Ireland in World War II. That was an interesting history of dairy. So in the 1600s, London had sent in a whole bunch of uh, skilled workers to erect a wall around the entire perimeter of the city. And upon doing so, they slapped the name London in front of it too. And that's where you get London Dairy from. Yeah, and this town has had a rich history of over thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Behind me is the Peace Bridge, which is a foot and cycle bridge that is 235 meters long. It spans the River Foyle in Derry. It connects the Ebrington Square with the rest of the city center. It was built on June 25th, 2011. free that you can do to explore the city. You get great views from this bridge. Look behind me. You can see all the houses in the, in the mountains area. Very beautiful. And you can see the city over here. Up is this giant wall. So this wall stands about 26 feet tall and it's at about one mile around the whole city. It took five years from 1613 to 1618 to build. So it's a pretty decent sized wall. It was all done by hand too. There, this was way before construction. Yep. Just men and stones and it's pretty impressive. All right, let's go for a walk. Walking the wall is an actual good way to explore the city. It keeps you away from all the traffic and you get to just look around and explore. While you go. Okay, explorers, I think this is where we're gonna leave you. Unfortunately, we got rained out yesterday, so we had to cut this video a little bit short. Yeah. From what we saw though, Derry is a great little town. It's not so touristy per se, although they do welcome tourists. It's a good place to come and learn the history about the troubles that have occurred between Northern Ireland and Ireland. One thing we would recommend is that you listen to people's stories because you'll see a difference between the, the sides and, and, and how people feel. It was definitely different yeah. between um, just exploring the rest of Ireland and then coming here and hearing a different side of the story. 
So our only real recommendation is just listen. Don't pick sides unless you are a part of it. Yeah. And also, they do have marches here every once in a while all over Ireland. Don't get involved with them. If you don't know what, what you're marching for then and you don't understand it, just, you know, you can watch, but don't get involved. Right. This city has become safe. There are no more of the bombings, no more people getting murdered or anything like that. Children are out in the street, they're playing. It has become a relatively safe city. You know, any city has its issues still. As always, thank you for coming along with us. Keep exploring. And we'll see you in Limerick. It's a beautiful morning here in Ireland, as you can see. Oh, wait, Let's do it again, Northern Ireland. It follows in the 1990s, Aaron, Michelle, Orla, James, and Aaron. Yep. When you look up pictures of dairy, London dairy. <laughs> okay, let me do that again, I'll just say dairy. Being chosen from the it's gonna come in a lot and get you. Twelve of these companies are guilds with the <laughs> Which spans the river do it which spring which spans the river foil in dairy. And it is 230. I had that in my head too. Okay.